Hey, it's YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at an armored amphibious vehicle. Or was it amphibious armored vehicle? That's eh, one of the two. Let's go. The real name for this vehicle is the BTR-80, and it's a real amphibious armored vehicle or armored amphibious vehicle. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing, but it's a real one that exists, actually. It's not made up for the game or anything like that. And when I see it, all I can think is that thing is made to crush cars. I mean, in real life, it's like, no, that was made for military purposes, YBR. Yes, I know that, but looking at it in Beam and G Drive, it looks like it was made to crush cars. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to crush a car with it. That's going to be the very first thing we do. And sometimes it crawls over the cars, sometimes it doesn't. It seems to kind of just depend on the angle that you hit it. So um, it's all mostly luck, basically, if we crawl over the car just push it like a freight train. But either way, we're going to hit this car right there, get a little bit of slow-mo, as you see, just because I like to be able to see what's happening. And oh no, am I going to flip my BTR? No, no. Okay, if I steer to the right, I might be able to save. We're rolling, aren't we? But I got the truck pretty good. Oh, yes, it's stabilized. Now crawl over the truck. Speed it up a little bit more. Come on. Not happening. Either way, though, I, I did a good bashing in on that truck and uh, got a decent amount of damage on it. I mean, this thing weighs, I believe it was 30,000 pounds. Or 15 American tons. And it actually didn't do that much damage. The way it hit the truck, the truck came out pretty lucky. I've seen it do a lot worse than that. Maybe I need a little bit easier of a vehicle so I don't have to worry about getting lucky with the alignment. So we can use like the bolide, which is like a ramp. And if it's like a ramp, it'll just run right over it. At least ideally that's the plan, you know. You know how that usually goes. Oh yeah, this will work perfectly. And then it doesn't do what I said at all. That's usually what happens. We'll see. So I'm just going to spin this thing right around. And ramp mode is engaged. If I really wanted it to be a ramp, I could remove the suspension. But I'm pretty sure that is low enough. And parking brakes on. Who needs parking brakes? Go! Run it over. Right over it. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Right over it, and absolute destruction to the car. Well, actually, not absolute, just a little bit of destruction. We ran right over it, and this time, the BTR is also flipping. Last time, just the truck flipped. This time, I flipped my BTR. Doesn't matter, though, because I went right over this car, and it went perfectly as I expected. Like, that was beautiful. But it's still not that much damage because I went right over it, so I didn't really crush it or anything. We need to crush it. That's what we need to do. So if I just park this car like right here, well, actually, you know what? For for variety's sake, we can pop into a new car, keep things fresh. So let's uh, do the Moonhawk. It doesn't matter which one because uh, we're just gonna crush it anyways. We're not gonna be driving it. So we just park it up here, just like that. Perfect. We're going to get my BTR. I don't know if I'm going to call it the BTR-80. I'm going to just call it the BTR because I don't have any other BTRs. See, if I had a BTR-60, if that was such a thing, I don't know if that's a real thing. But if there was a BTR-60, I would feel the need to say the number. For me, it's like this is the BTR. There's no other BTRs. This is it. So I might just call it the BTR. Or I might not. I make no guarantees. Depends how lazy I am, you know. All right, so this one is actually going to crush the car between the... No, it's just going to drive right over it. That was not the goal, but it was a beautiful jump. Ha! <laughs> that thing really flew. Like, my goal was to crush the car between the block and the BTR. That's not how things went, apparently, though. Uh, instead, I just ran over this car like it was nothing. Did some impressive damage to it, but just not what I was looking for. You know, I was not looking for that kind of damage. I want it to squish it. So what we need is a higher wall and a different vehicle. So we'll do the Varian. That's a nice big vehicle. And it doesn't matter which. And we'll find a higher wall to the right, I believe. I think that over there is just a little bit higher than that cube we were in front of. So that should be perfect. Slow down. Perfect. Okay. Stop running into the back of this. You're good. Oh, you're dented. Never mind, you're not good. Now you're good. Didn't really look that damaged after all. But I knew there was some damage because it didn't look quite right. I'm like, this is slightly off. And after I get done crushing cars and stuff, then we'll actually take a closer look at this thing. But, you know, I just see this. It's just like, we got to crush cars first. Priority number one is to crush these cars. 
just the way it, uh, it happens when I look at this thing. So here we go. This time it's actually gonna get crushed. It's not gonna ramp it. Yeah! That is it. Oh, perfect. See, that's what I was trying to do last time. But uh, the wall was too short, I think. Or the car was too short and the wall was too short. Either way, perfect crushing on the van. And that is destruction right there. That is... Yes, I'm happy with that one. Beautiful! Alright, let's get this out of the way. How does this thing sit? I mean, obviously it's not gonna drive. It's just a mess. Here's the inside. Yeah, I don't know what is going on here either. Don't worry. Alright, I'm happy with that. One last test. And this one's gonna be kind of fun. I would think we're gonna do a head-on collision between the BTR and... Let's do a civilian car and a uh, big rig. And I think I'm on the cube and I can't see it. So we'll do like a sunburst and uh, we want to go pretty fast, but we don't want a roll cage on it because I want the car to get destroyed. So we're going to use the, um, probably this one would work. The Sport RS. I think the RS is more than the S in terms of speed. Can't remember though for sure. I would have to confirm it, but it'll be fast enough either way. Get a nice color on it. And away we go. Gonna just... Line this bad boy up over here. Oh my goodness, I just bottomed out and my everything. My inner cooler is damaged. Oh wait, is that the inner cooler? Oh, it is, right? Yeah. It didn't look like it from afar. It looked odd because it was damaged. That's why. So here we go. We're going to go gas pedal on him and then make sure. I, can I slow-mo with this car? Yes, I can. So that's good. And here we go. We're going to be coming over the hill. They might even just land on me. That would be brutal. Nah, I'm way far away. So 100 miles per hour in my car, probably like 40 in the BTR. Oh no! All right, try one more time. Try one more time. Different car though. Different car. Uh, go Grand Marshal. The police. The police are trying to stop this machine of war. Yeah, right. It's impossible to stop the machine of war with a puny police car. But the uh, police officer, he wants to be a hero. Unfortunately, he's gonna have to die a hero. Oh, wrong button! I meant to hit escape! I almost messed this all up. An F1 is too close to escape. There we go. No glitchiness that time. Just destruction to the police. Oh, still glitched out. It was so close to working. One more try. I want it to work. Like, it'll look so good if it works. But it won't! Being a pain! I'm giving it one more chance. I want it to work so desperately. And if it doesn't work, we're going big rig versus this thing. Right under it. Just like that. Come on, don't glitch out. Don't glitch out. Maybe the wheels are getting stuck, so if I just go, like, reset right there. Is really... Ah, it's fine this time. Look, it made it! Ah, yes! Perfect. All right. I kind of had a poor camera angle to actually watch the action because I was trying to make sure nothing glitched out. But that is just beautiful, the amount of damage it did. The bull bar? Yeah, that's going to help you. No. This is a military machine. Bull bar is not going to help you at all. And you got the engine. Poor engine just sitting there. Cop, he's crushed. If he had a person in the back, they might not be crushed except for their legs. All right, now... We gotta give this thing a little bit of a challenge. I think it'll still tear through it, but let's face it off against the T series. And we can use a T75 because that's the one with the extra set of wheels, so it has extra weight behind it. Just give it as much of a chance as possible. And I accidentally hit spawn new instead of spawn on top of. So now we have three vehicles. Giddy. Was not the goal at all, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. I have a eight core processor. I can do this, no problem. I like my new processor. So many cores, so much power. All right, so the uh, other guy has a huge speed advantage on me. This is not gonna go well for this big rig. Oh, he, he, he put up a fight. He definitely put up a fight, but the uh, heavier vehicle had the speed advantage. It's not gonna go well for you. Actually, he flipped him over. And I say he, I don't know why, but yeah, the big rig managed to flip over the amphibious armored vehicle, the BTR-80, the armored amphibious vehicle. You know, I could just say the AAV. That probably has some other meaning I don't know of, though. Might not, I don't even know what it could mean, but it, that could stand for amphibious armored vehicle or armored amphibious vehicle. 
Either way, I think um, that's pretty good for the crushing. Except, since I have three cars out, there's one more thing I have to do. We have to crush a car between two of these. Which is going to be kind of difficult, but I'm sure I could do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try to estimate out the midway point between these two guys. So if I had to guess, I would say the midway would be something like right here. Just a guess. And then I spin this guy around, and then we accelerate the other one, and then the fun begins. And if this doesn't work, I could take the mathematical approach to it if I'll, I really needed to. Where I just spawn them at specific points, and then say, alright, they're both 100 meters away from the car. And I use meters because it's, that's what the game uses internally. Otherwise, I would use miles. BTR1 is a go. BTR2 is also a go. Here we go. And I, I really hope this uh, estimate for the positioning works out. I, I have no idea if this will be even close. It looks pretty good. I mean, for just a really rough, quick estimate, that is really spot on. And it wasn't so much of the car being crushed as two BTRs crashing into each other after one of them ran over a car. I mean, sometimes that thing is just able to run right over a car like it's nothing. That was one of those situations, and I think I lose. I think this BTR was the winner. Because he's even on top of me! Right, maybe we need to use a slightly bigger car in between to crush. So we can just, uh, maybe go back to the big rig real quick. And move it just a little bit more to where it's mine. Not a lot, just like... There, that's it. You know, it, was, it was really close to being perfect. So we're going to do the same thing as before. Whoops, wrong one. Going to spin this one around, and we start moving the other one. And then we move this one, and if everything goes according to plan, this one will be like a perfectly timed crush. That is, of course, assuming I accelerate. It takes me just as long to accelerate this time as it did last time, which may or may not happen, and I position them as the same, so probably it'll be close. Good. Okay, both are going, see the other one, it looks like mine might be a little off from last time, they're going to hit first by, oh wait, no, because I moved the truck up, ha uh ha, -huh. it's going to be good, mine's a little bit off though actually still, but there you go, uh, that's how you crush a truck, see that one wasn't just two BTR slamming into each other. That was two VTR smushing a truck. I can't even see the truck because there's BTR everywhere. Yeah, that's the truck. There's a BTR. Wow. Somehow the rear axle ended up in the front. That is impressive. Good job, BTRs. You just wreck everything in your path, don't you? I mean, of course, you could always have a fight with the Titans. So you could have like one BTR versus an ATTE. And in this situation, I genuinely have no idea who would win. This is just a really dumb idea, which I'm like, hey, I could do something this, like this, and, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, the other things I had a general idea because I did them before, this one is just, hey, you know what? I could do this. And, well, we'll see what happens. Move the big rig out the way he's no longer needed. And now we got to get the ATTE in motion, BTR in motion, and here we go. This should be fun. Uh oh. That thing was not going quite straight. That's all crooked. Gotta fix it. Perfect. That is a good fix. And oh my goodness. I didn't realize how much bigger the ATTE is. Like, it makes the BTR look small. And the BTR makes cars look small. I forgot how massive the ATTE is. And I think, uh,. Oh, it looks like the ATTE wins out in terms of like maybe just um, torque, basically. Like we were head on collision. We're basically neck and neck in that. But then the extra torque of the ATTE's engine pushes it more. I mean, yeah, the ATTE is obviously bigger, but I don't remember the weight of it. If the weight is uh, much more. I'm assuming it is more, but I don't remember how much more. Because I remember the ATTE wasn't too heavy for how big it was. I don't know. Uh, either way, though. The BTR loses to the ATTE. We all know now. It put up a pretty decent fight, but it couldn't quite do it. 
So now I think I'm done testing this with other vehicles, so I want to just go to somewhere where it's just that, and uh, it's just a little bit easier to test a vehicle when there's only one of them. So let's just go ahead and head over to... Where do we want to go? Let's go to the port. Now nah, let's go to Small Island, USA. That's better for this vehicle. Because on the port, there's not too much to do with something this big. I'll just get stuck everywhere. And now, to cause havoc on this island with the BTR. It'd be cool if you could just plow down the trees and all that, but you can't. So let's go ahead and go over the features of this thing, the most important of which is the J-beam structure. It's a pretty simple J-beam structure. It has a couple of the details included, like the little latches, the turret, and the antenna, but a lot of the details on the vehicle are not included in the J-beam structure. And it just includes the main shape of the vehicle. Like you can see this part, that part, that, 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 all the stuff on the roof basically. Those do not have any sort of J-beaming to them. Same with the lights. Just the main structure. And this is a very, very sturdy J-beam structure. And for a vehicle like this, I honestly have no idea what should happen when it crashes into a tree, aside from maybe the tree falling over. But if we crash into that tree at like 30 miles per hour right on the corner, it's like, what damage? This thing is just stupidly strong. As for camera angles, there's the one we have right here. This one right here, which is the closest you're going to get to an interior camera. When you can kind of see the reflection, which is kind of neat. But that's the closest you'll get to an interior camera because the only other, inter uh, only other camera excuse me, is this one on the side. There is, unfortunately, no interior on this vehicle. And since we're rolling to the water, let's test the amphibious abilities of this thing. So it does float. Yes. 30,000 pounds of floating mass and to drive it in the water you hold E to accelerate and then you use left and right to steer just like you normally would if it was on land and it works perfectly fine in the water believe it or not like it actually is a very competent boat which I didn't expect it still is amazing to me it's still funny to me I should say a 30,000 ton war machine that's like, I'm a boat too, I conquered land and sea, add some wings to me and I'll conquer the air, nothing can stop me, I am the BTR-80, at least, you know, that's what I imagine, you strap some wings to this and it'll, you know, it'll be like a stealth bomber, except with no stealth, just the bombs, strap some bombs to it too, there you go, and just, you know, just for the heck of it, we could try to do another crash into a tree at a little bit higher of a speed, or a wall, or something, I mean, we hit the ground pretty harsh right there, and again, it just holds up. Just super crazy sturdy, and I have no idea how to, what to say about that, if it's realistic or not. I'm just showing you what it looks like. Um, you could also move the turret and stuff too, which is cool. So if you hit F and H, you can move it left and right, and there's no way to like have it like a, tenth, a quarter of the way in one direction or anything. You can either have it forward, all the way right, or all the way left. To get it back forward, you hit Y, and it resets it to the central position. You can also do T and G to go up and down, and again, you can either have it all the way up or all the way down. There's no in-betweens. And when you're done, you can hit Y to make it back centered up and all that. You can also hit E to open and close those little doors right there, so you can see it out of it or not. So you can be like, I'm driving blind, as you just wreck everything. Thankfully, this camera does still see everything totally fine. It's not like it gets blocked out when you uh, open or close that. And you open it with Y. You close it with E, because the Y, it just resets everything, including that piece. As for lights, it does have functional lights. You hit that, and you see there are running lights in the back, and then there are headlights on the front. You could look at that tree, you could probably tell the difference in the lighting to it, because the headlights are functional, and you can also see they light up on the vehicle itself. So that's nice to see. And, um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much... Uh, all there is to, to for right there we could do some more driving and crashing see how it holds up so, you know a 50 mile per hour crash into something just boom like that like it's nothing this thing is just so ridiculously strong it's crazy the only way you're gonna do damage to it is if you have something bigger than it and there's really not that many things bigger than it oh it does also have custom sounds I haven't really give you guys a good chance to listen to it so until the next respawn, I will shut up so you can listen to the nice custom sounds.
And now I'm back to blow your eardrums out. So hopefully you got a good idea of what it sounds like. And I think the next thing to do is test its off-roading ability, which means we need to go to a new map. So let's go ahead and head to... Um... Well, there's only one map I really have that's like a real off-road test, and that is off-road crawl. So uh, not many options here, so let's go there. Hopefully it'll fit through the gas station. I mean, this BTR is pretty big. Yeah, oh, it'll fit. No problem. All right, so the first test we're going to do is just kind of driving around on these things. So I'll make it easy. We'll go at an angle on the first few. Make sure it can do it at an angle. No problem there. Head on. A little bit of a struggle. There we go, but it got it. And another head on right after the other one. And through it. Okay. So it does, the, it does those ones pretty good. Let's see if uh, it can do the steeper one right here, though. Uh, no. Not head on, that's for sure. You might be able to do it at an, an angle, but I don't know. I think it's, um, the thing just doesn't have the tires because you end up bouncing with your front end off of that. So I don't know if it could do that, except for very, very specific angles and situations. So uh, that's in, that's, uh, its limits basically. So let's go ahead and test it somewhere else and get a good feel for how the gearing works. Because I was noticing something interesting. I can basically force a downshift with this thing. Like right now it's in third gear. If I want it to go to second, I go off throttle, on throttle. And it'll downshift. If I do it again, it goes to first, but it upshifted back up because it was basically at red line. But it's kind of interesting the way this thing is geared. It just feels different in the way it wants to really rev up. Which is funny for like a military vehicle that wants to rev up. Just doesn't make much sense. But that's the way it feels. It's funny. Shortcut. And then... Boom, pop it right into first, just like that. Real interesting the way it drives. Alright, so here's where you want to test. We're just going to slow it down. And watch what gear it stays in while I drive. And I'm noticing it is holding first gear. Uh-oh, I came into that really poorly. Come on, power through it. Power! Oh, no! One thing I did figure out though that's kind of interesting with this thing uh, earlier on, when you're off-roading with it, you can do a weird kind of man maneuver. You hold both the brake and the throttle and then you let go of one and it kind of keeps you your revs up so you can maintain momentum a little bit easier if you have to like bounce back and forth like this to free. It's just kind of interesting like that so you can just go like that and then come on! Oh so close! You can do this! Just more power! I don't care if you have no more power, so like we need to bounce back and forth, you go both, just reverse, both, forward only, and then you can hopefully bounce out of this basically by doing that enough. So it's actually struggling a lot through here. I mean, I wasn't get, doing it any favors with the path I chose, I was just going at it, so that's kind of my own fault, but I thought I'd be able to do it, man! Okay, there's no way it's going to clear this, so I just got to drive around that. It did a pretty good job of scaling the wall, though, to climb around that. And through here, I, I don't see that happening. That looks too steep. Especially with that. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that is definitely super stuck. Not going to move unless I teleport it. So let's just do that real quickly to keep the momentum. Because I don't think I, I could have freed that at all. The other one, I at least felt like I could, you know? Alright, so going through here, was working pretty good, and then it got stuck, so you can do that trick where you hold both, and then see if we can just get a little bit of momentum through here. Come on! Ah, this is a little... So it's not the greatest for off-roading. At least, uh, crawling kind of off-roading where you have to go over rocks. But we could also try it in some, like, mudding and see how it does in deep mud, so we can go ahead and head to Ultimate Test Terrain for that. All we're going to do here is just use the mud that's located right over here to test out my vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my truck right here. Get my BTR. And let's see how it does through the mud. So I'm just going to probably go full throttle through this and see how it does. And ooh, it slows down a lot. Come on. Come on. All right. Well, 
It does slow down a lot, but at least it seems like it's able to get through the mud. Just a very slow process. Here's the first real issue it might encounter though, and just doing full throttle head on, it gets stuck right there. And for comparison's sake, a off-road truck I think will do a little bit more than that. We can make sure, but I'm pretty sure the off-road truck can complete this just going head on, not even doing any fancy maneuvering or anything like that. Oh yeah, the truck is definitely going through this a lot faster though. So just full throttle with the truck and yeah, okay. So for driving in thick mud, the stock pickup is definitely superior. So not the greatest at off-roading overall, but great at crushing cars. And with the durability of this thing, I'm thinking we should just skip to the more extreme tests. Don't worry about the cliff and all that. Just go to leap of death and make it fly. Now to be honest, I'm pretty sure this is going to be terribly boring. This thing is just so durable and strong, I'll probably just bounce off of things and leave dents in Leap of Death. So, I honestly don't expect much. I'm saying it now. This first one will be in real time to see if it's really even worth watching it. And uh, we'll find out based on what this one looks like. Okay, that's uh, not looking so good and glitched out. Right, I'll give it one more chance. I, I will give it one more chance to uh, hopefully not glitch out. I'm pretty sure it was the wheels that glitched out there, but it was kind of... I wasn't exactly paying attention, so I was not, I'm not exactly sure what it was, but I think it was the wheels. This time I'll try to hit it at a more downward angle. Although it would have been a lot better with a manual transmission. And, okay. Well, it got a little bit flatter. That's about all that happened. And now it's just going to bounce around. This is terribly boring. It's not going to get damaged or anything. It's just going to go boink, boink, boink for a half hour until it gets to the bottom or gets stuck, which it did. Let me try to get a better angle at this. If I do it in manual mode, I might be able to give you something interesting here. Because then I could just actually slam on the brakes to hopefully, there we go, do a real dive. Like the last one kind of hit it with the tires. This one's going to hit straight down or at least very close to it so it might be a little bit more interesting wow all that force it's actually just bouncing upwards that that is unusual yeah I think this thing might be a little too strong because that doesn't even make sense it bounced up Normally things just compress, you know? They hit it and then they go squish. This one went, no squish for you. And it goes bouncing upwards. Well, it's getting boring again. Like, there's nothing happening, you know? It's just bouncing along and there's no real damage happening or anything. So it's like, why am I watching this? This is lame. There, it's stuck anyways. At least I'm calling it. Oh. Stop rolling, I want to reset you. I'm gonna take a nap. I'm just gonna take a nap. Yeah, I, I thought this would be kind of boring, to be honest, and it is. I'm curious now though, will it actually get to the bottom just going in the slowest route ever? Nope, it's gonna get in that hole. Oh my goodness, it's gonna go to the water. No, it's not. All right, I'm gonna make this more fun. We're gonna put some gravity on it. I'm sure that'll be a little bit more interesting. There's some damage. And you notice the top part that's not J-beam that does seem to be a little bit more glitchy than the rest. Like the part that actually has J-beam into it seems to hold up very solidly but it doesn't glitch out. The parts that aren't J-beam, like all that Todd stuff, that stuff gets a little messy. Oh hey, the tire came off. I didn't know it would do that. I guess that is surprising. I've hit the brake all brake groups and uh, it didn't do anything before, but now it did. Like the only parts you can actually take off of this, by the way, are the engine and transmission, the little covers on the front that are closed now thanks to the power of the sun's gravity, the antenna, and then you can remove the gun from the turret and the turret 
and then the wheels and then the suspension but you can't remove like just parts of the suspension like I usually do sometimes here's another question can this drive in like high gravities like you know 70 well right now the back wheels are busted so probably not let's just uh, give it another chance so 68 no 62 just about so probably like 60 gravity you could drive in and whee! I mean, it does get beat up if you give it enough gravity and then it glitches out so that's interesting all right let's go ahead and make our way to brutal slope to finish things up okay BTR and we're gonna maybe use the turbo on this to get it to go faster I don't know I haven't decided yet maybe I'll do both that sounds like the best way backed up a little bit too much I was just trying to estimate it should be close enough though ooh this radius it, it turns bad I can manage it but ooh that was not that was not comfortable so we're gonna do this one with the turbo and see what speeds we reach and what kind of damage it gets and oh my goodness the tachometer doesn't know what it's doing it has just oh my goodness that looks funny the tack is freaked out first we're gonna just hit the wall about 200 miles per hour on it give or take a little bit 196.95 to be more accurate you want the exact speed and this is taking a while come on I slow mo this way too early oh well look at that, that what, what, what the that whole back end is just holding up except for the non j beam extra detail parts and it glitched out you gotta stop glitching out where'd you go like half the thing just disappears on me. All right, let's uh, try to convertibilize this. I, I honestly, I have no idea whatsoever what'll happen when you try to convertibilize this thing. This should be uh, interesting. Also, we are able to drive so fast the lights kind of flash, the, the tail lights. The antenna is definitely going to be convertibilized. I don't know about the rest of it. Ooh, I'm going a lot faster this time. Oh, goodness. Preparing for impact. Antenna is going through and bending. Rest of the vehicle. Getting low. And it's actually going to make it through. No, not quite. Did not quite make it through. I mean, I don't know how you could have a convertible BTR anyways. That doesn't even make sense. But there we go. There's what it looks like when you ruin it. And I think that'll do it. So until next time, this is my YBR. I'll see ya.